Hi! So today I thought we would do a new how to build Boop app uh, video since we've had some changes and updates to uh, Loop to version 1.9. It might be a good time to sort of check in and see where people are. Um, so we'll just start right off. If you open up Loop Docs and you can bring up the home page, we're going to go under Setup and then we're going to click on Install Loop Building App. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the first step is basically verifying your Mac OS. We need to have at least version 10.13.4. So we have 10.13.6 on my computer. We're good to go. If you needed an update, you could click here for software update and it would open up your app store, take you to your updates link and your update would be sitting right there for you with a little install button to do. So. We're good with the OS. I think it's also a good idea at this point to check your iOS, see if your phone has any updates due. If your phone has updates due, you should install those. That might take some time. The next step we're going to do is install Homebrew. We're going to simply copy this long highlighted command line. We're going to go to our Applications folder. We're going to scroll all the way down to Utilities folder. And within that utilities folder is an app called Terminal. We're going to double click and open that. We're going to paste in that big long line. And this is a script that's going to in install something called Homebrew. We're going to press return to continue. It's going to ask us for our password. This is your computer password. Uh, it won't show the keystrokes as you type it, so don't keep uh, thinking it's messed up. It just doesn't show the keystrokes. So I'm going to type mine in right now. You can see it doesn't show. Press return. It's installing the objects. It won't take long. This is a pretty quick process. Uh, but basically it's installing some packages and things that help us in the background uh, with building loop. So we wait. Won't take long. It will give a successful message when it's done. There it is. It says installation successful. Once you see all of this, you can go ahead and close out terminal app. We're done with it. Uh, you can close it, quit terminal, and we'll scroll on down to the next part, which is set up your developer account. Now, hopefully you actually did this ahead of time because confirming your Apple account, your Apple developer account can sometimes take up to 24 hours, I think. Um, so if you try and do this right now, you might have to wait a little bit until it's confirmed. Um, if so, just pause this video, come back to it tomorrow. Um, but basically, to get your Apple developer account, you're going to go to developer.apple.com. You can click there. You can click on account, and that would take you to your login if you already had a developer account, for example. Um, but if you don't have a developer account and you want to sign up for one, you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there's this developer program link. Click on that. And you're going to click on the enroll form and follow the instructions. It's really straightforward. You're going to enroll as an individual, not a business. You're going to give them your credit card information. It costs currently, at the time of this video, $99 a year. Um, and then eventually, within about 24 hours or so, you'll get an email confirmation that you're enrolled and you'll be good to go. So, enroll button right there. Good to go. So once you get your developer account all set up, um, your paid account, you can move on to the next steps. You want to install Xcode, and basically you're going to go to your App Store again. You're going to search for something called Xcode, and it'll bring it up here. You're going to want to click on Xcode, and for yours, it'll say, say install. Since I already have it on my computer, it says open. But you'll click there, it'll say install. This is a big download. This download will take quite a while depending on your internet speed and the installation takes a while. So this is actually one of the longer parts of the whole build process is downloading Xcode. Once you download it, we're going to open it up. And when you open it, um, it may say that it's installing command line tools and that might take a little bit. You're going to wait that part of it out too. 
But once all of that's done, you're going to uh, answer anything about keychain access that you see during the build process or installation process. You're going to want to say always allow and enter your computer password. So not your Apple ID, but your computer password. So that's all kind of a whirlwind, but once you get your computer updated, homebrew installed, developer account signed up for, we're pretty much really close to building. We're gonna open up Xcode, which now that we have it installed, is going to be in our applications folder. Under Xcode, we're going to open it up. The most recent version of Xcode currently, as of the time of this video, is 9.4.1. When Xcode opens, you'll notice nothing popped up on my screen to make it really obvious, like a new window or anything like that, but you do see Xcode up in this upper um, left-hand corner. If we click on the word Xcode and we go to Preferences in the drop-down menu, we uh, have these tabs across the top. We're going to click on the Accounts tab and then the little plus sign right here, and we're going to add an Apple ID. This is the Apple ID, the same one that you use to sign up for your paid developer account. If instead of getting a paid developer account you wanted to try this for free, you can just skip the developer account page and you can add an Apple ID here and it will generate a free developer account for you on the fly right through this portal. Um, but any apps that you build with that will only be good for seven days and they will glitch out. You'll get a white screen, it won't open on your phone. You have to rebuild the app every seven days. So um, if you just kind of want to test out Loop and see how it works, you can go ahead and try a free account for seven days. You'll be able to play with Loop. Um, but if you do want to decide to keep Loop around for more than seven days um, of having to rebuild it every time, then you're going to want to get a paid developer account. The paid developer accounts at current time are $99 a year. So that's it. Okay, so we're going to add our account. I'm going to enter in the Apple ID that's associated with my developer account. It's going to ask me for my password. This is my Apple ID password. And it automatically brings in the developer uh, accounts that are associated with that Apple ID. I have two. This is my free one and this is my paid one. So they all come in together because they're both associated with the same Apple ID. That's cool. All right, so we're pretty much done with this page. Um, I find one useful thing to turn on is under text editing. If you turn on line numbers, we'll be able to see code line numbers. I think that's kind of nice. So if you wanted to just quickly click that checkbox on before we close out the preferences, close it out. We're good to go. We'll keep scrolling on down. There's a text editing we just covered. So the next part is getting really exciting. We're getting really close to actually building um, our Loop app. We're going to download the code for what we want to build Loop with. So uh, if you're a new user, I recommend you just click here to download the master branch. That's the stable, non-experimental, um, tried and true version. So we're going to click there and it will download. Depending on which browser you're using, if you're using Chrome, Firefox, Safari, your download will end up looking just a little bit different. If you're using Chrome, it might be a folder, a zipped folder that you have to unzip. If it's Safari, it's not. Um, for Safari users, you can see the downloads right from here. You can see master um, or go to your downloads, close that, go to your downloads folder and you can see that it downloaded loop master. Uh, it's very nice. You just want to make sure that uh, you keep this folder in the downloads. Don't move it to the desktop. Don't move it to uh, documents. That can mess things up if you have iCloud syncing going on. So just keep it in your downloads folder and make sure you, if you rename it that you don't add a space. Like don't name it space Katie or space August or something like that. That will mess things up too. So just leave it. Um, if you want to rename it, make sure you don't have any spaces in the name. So Loop Master, we're going to click on that and we're going to go find this blue folder or blue file called loop.xcodeproj and we're going to double click on that. That's our main folder, our main file that will open up the project. We'll ask you uh, if you want to open it. Yes, we do. 
And with that, we have our loop code project opened up. So we're gonna go ahead, um, I'm just gonna condense these down because I just don't like seeing a long trail of folders. Uh, the old versions of loop had us start by clicking on this bottom file and changing some of this information here. We no longer need to do that with version 1.9 of loop. Uh, that is all done automatically for us, which is great. So for us now with loop 1.9, we can just click on this top blue loop folder here, and we're going to go straight to the target signings. Uh, if you don't see this column here, it's probably because you haven't clicked on this little box to make it pop out. So you can go ahead and do that. If you don't want to pop that box out, you can find them simply by clicking there. I, however, like the pop out. So we're going to have this box pop out. There's other pop out boxes here you can use if you like certain views or not like certain views. Things pop left, right. Uh, so those are all pop out boxes. So we're gonna to go to the four targets. Uh, we need to sign four targets. These first four are what we're going to be signing with our developer team. Our developer team is gonna be in the signing section under team. We can see right now there's this kind of dot dot. And what's gonna happen is we're going to choose our developer team. I'm going to use uh, my paid account. My paid account does not have personal team behind it. It's just my name. And it gives me a profile. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sign with the same team for all four targets. And none of them generated any errors or any messages. If you're a first time builder, you will probably get a couple messages. Uh, you may get one message about uh, something, depends on what it is, uh, with a message. But usually if you're in the loop docs, I'm going to click back here for a little bit you might see some of these common messages, uh, for example, about uh, registering devices, um, all these kinds of things you can go in here, registering devices. It's common that a first time phone on a first time build will have a couple messages. The actual text of the error message will be pretty useful. Um, if you just follow it, it should build just fine. But uh, one other thing to note is once you did sign, um, if you click back to the target, you'll notice that instead of that dot dot, we now have a string of information here. That's unique to me. It's, uh, it's mine, mine alone. It's registered to my developer uh, team, my paid team. If you try to use the same one, it wouldn't let you build with it because it's already assigned to mine. And that's basically what this uh, development team string here does is it automatically sets it up for you so the next time you build it will all match up and it'll be really easy you don't even have to think about it anymore so we've got our four targets signed everything looks fine uh, at this point if you wanted to do any code customizations you would want to go and do those you can read about code customizations in the setup um, as you do it it says do you want to do any code customizations you can follow the code customization page and basically, you can read about all the different types that are here and whether or not you want them. For first-time users, I recommend just go ahead and install the uh, plain, normal, uncustomized loop app and see how you're doing with it. And if there's parts of it you want to change, come back uh, and check customizations. You can always just go back to the exact same folder that you are building with right now, open it up again, make any customizations and just press build again. It will save your signing team. It will save all of your information from before in that same build folder. All right, so we're all signed up. I don't wanna do any code customizations, but I could if I wanted to. Um, basically, they're really easy. It says where to find all the things you can follow along. It says loop, view controllers, and the file name, and the line number. That's why we turned on the line number so you can find them all. Very simple. If you have a uh, Apple Watch that you want to be integrated with loop use, make sure your Apple Watch is paired to this phone that you're about to build on before building. Um, if you pair the watch to the phone after the build, uh, loop won't be able to install on the watch. So your phone needs, your watch needs to be paired with your phone 
prior to building loop up. Okay, so the other last remaining thing is we want to make sure that our phone gets connected. If your phone is not connected to the computer, you'll notice that it'll say no devices connected. So, and you'll only have simulators. So we want to go ahead and connect our phone. And you'll notice when we connect it, the phone will show up here. So there's my phone. My phone happens to be generically called iPhone. Uh, and I'll click on that. You want to keep your passcode off on your phone. Um, turn it off because this does take a while to build. And if your phone locks during the build process, Xcode won't be able to access your phone to be able to put the loop app on. So go ahead and take your passcodes off your phone right now. Get it all plugged in and we're ready to go. And so what we do now is we push play or build and it's going to start building. Uh, in old days, this used to go by really super fast, but the new version of Loop does not cache um, the cartridge and stuff the same way that it used to. So it's actually going to be a longer setup. Don't be surprised. This running two of two custom shell scripts, this step in particular will take you quite a while. It can be anywhere between 15 minutes and 45 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer, your internet, what's going on. Um, so just be patient, wait it out. If there is a problem, it will tell you and it will error out. If you don't get an error message, just let it keep going. Be patient, maybe go get a cup of coffee. Um, I'm gonna pause this video here and I'll come back when my running two of two script is over so we can catch up with it then. All right, see ya. All right, so it looks like our two of two just finished. It's finishing off the installation. And when it's done, we're going to get a message at the bottom of the screen that says, uh, build succeeded. And this won't take very long. And then my phone will have loop app installed on. I'm gonna hold up my phone so we can all see when it's done. Basically, just a tiny bit. There it is, build succeeded. Now, shortly after, it says running loop on phone. And very soon, this screen is going to turn boom with the very first prompts for what I want to do with my loop app with regards to health app access. Um, the first thing that pops up is Would you like to allow notifications? I'm going to say allow. And then the next thing it has is the health app prompts, which are probably white and blurry and you can't read, but we'll get that into that a little bit uh, with the loop app setup in a subsequent video. I'm gonna go ahead and say, turn all categories on. And they all turn on. And then in the upper right-hand corner, allow. And that will get us started. That's a good segue into the next uh, loop app. If, unfortunately, during the build process, you got a big screaming red error message that said that your build failed, um, the yellow and the yellow are warnings, the red are actual error messages that will prevent building, you can double click in that area. It will issue all of the warnings. You can ignore the yellows. Those are nothing, don't worry about them. Um, but the red ones do cause your build to fail. So if you get a red arrow, go ahead and click on it. And then I want you to go to the install loop build errors section. And this build errors has all of the most likely causes of whatever caused your build to have a problem. It has the solutions to them built right in. So you find your red uh, error, your alert, double click on that error and you start reading what the codes are for the failure. So you can uh, match them up with what the solution is in this area. So if you get exit code one and it says uh, something about cache builds, then here's the solution. If you have uh, exit code one but it says xcode select install was wrong, this is a different solution. So basically all of the solutions are within here. If you run into any of the problems, come and check here, match up your loop error. If uh, your error isn't on there, then go ahead and drop a line at Gitter or in the Facebook looped group and we'll see if we can get you set up and on the road as quickly as possible. But 
that is how you build version 1.9 and the next app I'll do is about setting up the loop app itself and getting it configured correctly and what all the different settings mean. So congrats. See ya.